he really was just how DMX was. They just Hype Williams just kind of switched it up uh, somewhat for because he didn't really pay him or take care of him when he said <laughs> right. for his story. Right. So you know let's get let's get into um, for people who don't know. Let's just start from the beginning, man. And we really um, did go into. Uh, <laughs> How the movie started, that's a true story too. <laughs> so just for, for people who don't know, man, run down your, your history, your background. Chris I'm just, man, I'm just blessed, man. And Chris Gotti, you know what I'm saying? I just got a new company that I started called Adventure Music. You know what I'm saying? And uh, I empower independent artists to own, operate, and monetize their business. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, empowerment. That's what it's about. We have to empower each other so they can, now we can get up and stop being up underneath this suppression that we've been under. You know, I it's we'll get to it. But these you know, gringos, my, yeah, these gringos. <laughs> <laughs> so they can't build. They can't build the wall. This ain't just a black problem. This is a Latin problem. And right to my left is Don DeNero. That's my Latin president. You know what I'm saying? He he with my company and my partner. So, which we're doing it from the black and brown. I'm I'm yes. again. You know, it's a. It's a blessing to get, be able to do this for everybody that I do it for. That's why I travel around and do what I'm doing. But, you know, my history is Murder, Inc., but, you know, got a lot of history with Murder, Inc. We helped out with Jay-Z and Rockefeller starting that and Rough Riders and getting that going with DMX. So there's a lot of history. Uh, I'm over, over 30 years in the music industry. So I know a little bit about the industry. You know what right. I'm saying? From the business side, Murder, Inc. was doing over $200 million before the feds came in. Not 50 Cent, please get it right. Look, let's talk about that. Um, talk about it. Ja Rule, 50 Cent, that beat, man, just popped back up. Like, yeah, it recently. Didn't, it didn't pop back up. 50's a troll, you know that. Uh -huh. Like, that's what he do. So, I don't know why people look and expect anything different. You know uh, like, his whole career is is how he started his... Like, that how to rob and all of that is poking the bell. Yeah, but, you know... But, but it, it, it is what he, it's what he do. The way Ja handles himself versus... That's their business, you know what I'm saying? We... Jai's my brother, but at the end of the day, he's old and tired because it's nothing going on. Mm -hmm. Ain't no pressure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you heard me? Yeah. Ain't no pressure. Hey, so I apply the pressure. So a lot That's of people don't know, um, at a time, 50 actually had an order of protection out against That's you. That's a fact. Like, can you speak? Can you speak on that situation? I can speak on this old and finished, you know All what I'm right. saying? That's because we stabbed him in the studio. <laughs> He ran ah. to the cops. The crazy part, people don't know about the story. When he ran out of the studio, there was, in New York, there was like the biggest music block in New York City. It had the Hit Factory, which was the biggest studio at the time. And right up the block was Sony Studios, which was like the second biggest studio. So we would always be in the Hit Factory making music. Um, and we ran, in, you know, we, we ran into him. Things happened. He ran out of there, fucked up and bleeding. They ran down to Sony Studios. And he ran in the streets begging someone to help him. Niggas is trying to kill him. But people don't know who he ran into. He ran into Benzino, mm. the nigga who owns yeah. Source Magazine. Yeah. And Benzino didn't know him at the time, so he said he just seen another black man. If y'all know anything about Boston, they real, where he's from, it's all black, black, black. You know what I'm saying? Real, real pro-black. So mm. he seen another black man running, bleeding and shit. And it's like, take my car. I got to drive outside and go to the hospital. Get out of here. Mm -hmm. But he didn't know him. So it was kind of fucked up because 50 Cent, Eminem, and them shut down the Sauce magazine. And this nigga saved, helped save his ass. Because we was on his ass that night. God worked in mysterious ways. You know what I'm saying? But it's all good. All right. So um, I remember I went and saw you speak at a Rainbow Push Conference like earlier yeah, this year. Yeah, we, uh, That's speak. my man. Uh, we call him Godfather. Right. But his name is Jesse. Right, <laughs> and then with Jesse Jackson, Raymond right? With Jesse Jackson, Godfather, what up, GF? What's good, man? Yeah, so it, we can curse here, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm just so, making sure. So you had you had spoke about how leading up into that whole Fed and Diamond all that situation, you and a couple other big bosses from different from the coast, all the coast, mm. well, y'all was going to really, my Suge Knight and Jay Prince. Right, y'all was going to um, start the major, the first black major, the lady. Facts. So we went. We we had a set up to get our first. We was gonna be the first black owned uh, major distribution record label. Uh, where we was the East Coast, Jay's the Midwest, mm -hmm. and, and Sugar's the South. I mean, I'm uh, sorry. And, and Sugar's the West Coast, and Jay's everything in the middle there. Mm -hmm. You know. So when you look at the map, that's how we looked like we was covering. I was going from up New York down to Miami, 
everything in between, you know, the whole East Coast like that. Jay was right in the middle, coming across from Houston and into over here in Chicago. Mm -hmm. And, and, um, and Suge was going to take care of all of the West Coast stuff. And really, that's the beginning of the end. If you, I was say, you, you think that had so so you? Yeah. So I don't. You, I don't really think. I kind of know it just because of the conversations I had when these agents, when we're going through our trial, and they're they're, they're showing and, and presenting evidence and things what we were doing, and you knew what led to, uh, let's say, the indictment for right. me and my brother. Right. So that that's why it seemed like you guys and Suge and. Even Jay Prince, all of y'all got pressure from the feds like at the same time. Yeah, they pressured them, but you know, for some, there was a little bit more sauce with us mm -hmm. at the time. You know, timing is everything mm -hmm. in success and in negative times, mm -hmm. right? The timing of it, it could have been the worst time of it when it happened, but right. you know, there was a lot going on at the time, like 50 Cent snitching and shit like that. I got affidavits and statements that he, Curtis Jackson said, this, that, so, and then I had someone that worked for me that was actually homeless uh, that I took in and helped, got him a lot of money, started making a lot of money with me. He was actually working with Dex Diamond. Dex Diamond is the reason he brought him in, so I could blame Dex for my whole fucking trouble. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But that's another story. <laughs> but uh, so this kid good. came in. I don't want to mention his name because he still has an order protection, or okay. uh, witness protection, actually. Uh, so I won't mention his name, but he came in. I helped the nigga out. He gets in trouble because he was doing those Skytail two-way pages. I don't know if you remember those. Mm -hmm. he, he was stealing them, and that's, you know, it's a federal crime, right? So he gets in court. He was stealing and, like, turning them on for free for people and getting money and shit. And he gets caught, and uh, he tells the feds it's, he got a great story from him. Mm. And the story was, you know, how much money was coming in the office, drug dealers and drugs, guns, all types of shit. All types of shit. This right. story was amazing. <laughs> so you tell the fairy tales. Facts. But no, look, look, there's a, look he, you know, whenever you lie, uh, the best lies is because you have a bit of something that's real. It's the truth. Yeah. So yeah, there was a lot of fucking cash coming in my office. I'm not talking about a little bit. I'm talking about a lot. Right. Cash. Right. And uh, he made it where it was like drug cash, and I was like, "Nah, I'm gonna get." First, I'm a, I was at the time I was gambling about 1.8 a week in gambling. 1.8 million. So what? What was yeah. your sports? Sports. Poker or sports. Sports. I managed the biggest poker player in the world, Phil Ivey. Okay. Still. Okay. So, yeah, there was a lot of cash. Phil might have even sent 500 thousand from a debt someone owed him. You know, when you playing these games like that, a poker game. Let's say this is the game. We have to have. Honor, meaning we don't have that cash on us, right. but we saying this is what we playing for. I'm good for it. So if you lose, you just sent the money, right. and that's how that game always worked in the poker world. And in sports is the same way. You're betting fifty thousand, a hundred thousand a game, and then you you tally up at the end of the week. So one week I might win a million dollars, or it's better. And the, my bookie was in L.A. That money come flying in. It's, it's in bags, right? For real. It's in shoeboxes. <laughs> like, niggas would say, oh, because that's what he told the, the grand jury when everything went on. It was like shoebox money, and yeah. I, I told my lawyer, yeah, that's true. Right. I said, it ain't from drugs, though. Right. You know what I'm saying? This is me gambling. He even, but he did see, he kind of helped me. There's always something with snitches. I don't know if anyone's been dealing with a lot of, like, snitching niggas. They, they call it, like, snitches pride. And the snitches pride is they always usually give you an out in their snitching story, in their testimony. So one of his outs was, Chris could be a professional gambler because he actually witnessed me winning hundreds of thousands of dollars gambling right there with me, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So everyone knew, and then I would have count, cash count machine right in my office, okay. and I had a huge safe, and I just tucked my shit in. And, uh, and I wasn't betting just for me, John was betting with me, right. Herb was betting with me. So he had a real base to make some stories of, but it wasn't real, it didn't mean it was real. Right. You know, he said guns was in the office. Absolutely, I ain't gonna lie. Yes. So when you got that much money, is but it wasn't my guns. I don't have to claim my, those guns. They right. ain't my guns. You know what I'm saying? So he couldn't put it on me. But I told him, yeah, guns was in my drugs. You know what's no? I don't know. I don't do no drugs. I don't even drink. Like so, they're not mine. If it was, I don't know what he's talking about. Right. You know what I'm saying? So that that kind of got that out the way. It was like you know, oh, his story got all fucked up. So then it's part of why I'm sitting there. 
Right. Because when they put him on the stand, he, my lawyer destroyed him. See, he destroyed him. Yeah. So do you think, um, I know at that same time, too, one of your friends, um, uh, Supreme, yeah. they tried to connect you, you, what you guys were doing being like the biggest record label to, you know, what, so Supreme. what was going on. Yeah, yeah, that's um, all. And it's all fair questions. Like, I right. ain't, those are all fair questions. The reality is, if you understand me, and I'm going to say the face understood me. Right? It's the United States of America. They know who the fuck you are. Mm -hmm. Right? And especially once they investigate, they really find out who you are. So if they know, I'm from Hollis, Queens. That's in New York. Right? So Hollis, it's just a little strip. But we, that's that's the block. You know what right. I'm saying? That's where we from. Like, if you was from, you didn't claim you was from anywhere else but Hollis. Right. Southside, where Prem is from, it's more, let me say, it's more people, it's more of a hood. And that's, he's the king of the South Side. Right. Hollis and South Side don't fuck with each other. Period. My whole, I can tell you my whole adolescent years from, say, 14 to 22, maybe 23, I banged out with someone from South Side. I'm talking about my whole high school years, every day, not Monday through Friday, no days off. When they talked about backpack rappers, I was the first. Because mm -hmm. I would lose my books mm -hmm. fighting or whatever every day. So I had to start carrying a backpack so I wouldn't lose my books so I could fight. Right. You know, back then it wasn't really much gun. It was more stabbing or fighting, you know. You know so the hands had, you had to have hands. Uh, I heard in New York, I still do a lot of stabbing. Like, well, yeah, they cut your ass. You like, know we saying? don't do no stabbing in Chicago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can't get that close. Like, nigga got a gun this Well, you, long, know that, you, know? you know, that breeds a different kind of person, right? So, again, back... And the first of all, I'm not no young dude, so I'm 51. So if you go back to that era, it's, it wasn't a lot of guns circulating. So when you had a gun back then, and when I'm in high school, if you got a gun, it was like, oh, this nigga. When, you ever see Juice? Yeah. Oh, you got that Juice. Yeah. Yeah. He got see, that's yeah. real shit. That's <laughs> real New York shit. Right. You know what I'm saying? So if you didn't, when you was in that era, in that time, nigga, I might have been the mm -hmm. one who had some guns. Mm -hmm. So I was that nigga in the hood that everyone would come and say, yo, I need it. But at the end of the day, in high school, it's like you go, you ain't going to school. I was, I wasn't going to school with no hands. I, and I was nice with my hands. I had no problem fighting niggas. No, like, like so, I ain't mean it like that. Like, I understand, like, like, but I'm saying like, like New York and Chicago. I don't know if you, cause you not, you know, you're a famous guy. You might yeah. not be into the Facebook thing or whatever. You know, if New York and Chicago had the little Facebook beef or whatever, <laughs> they were going back and forth. And New York niggas like the type, like, cause, I wasn't because, on I because of, <laughs> like, the difference in lifestyle, we didn't understand. Like, we don't... Because we're not a gang, we're, we're not a gang affiliate city. But y'all gang we, niggas, they gang No, we, our man. gang is different. So your gangs is, again, you have more of an agenda <laughs> and a leader, let's say. Gangs have a leader. And the more now the leader in the hoods for us was the block the where you from, right? It wasn't an organization in that sense unless you was supreme, <laughs> unless you was like that, right? And that's why he was different. 